Hi everyone! Welcome to this channel! My name is Nastya and in this video I wanted to share my story of majoring in linguistics. I want to answer some common questions that I get how and why I decided to major in linguistics, what it was like to study linguistics in the university and how I applied my knowledge, how I used my bachelor's degree and my journey with CRTTS team. Hopefully this video and especially the last part will be useful to you if you're thinking about getting a major in linguistics. And let's dive right into it. In my previous video, the link will be in the description, I shared my story of learning foreign languages generally and I actually left out some important details that I will be sharing in this video in order to answer the question how and why I decided to get a bachelor's degree in linguistics. So, why linguistics? My grandmother lived in the United States for two years and when she came back, back to Russia I was six years old. She came back speaking a little bit of English, which seemed to me to be a really big deal, and she also brought with her a small Russian-English dictionary and picture me, a six years old Russian girl who never even thought about the existence of different languages at that point, because I was just a kid, saw so that dictionary. Um, I went through that dictionary just a couple of pages and I was amazed at the idea that for some people that gibberish, <laughs> uh, it seemed to be to be just gibberish, you know, just a combination of random letters, that for some people on this planet it all makes sense. That's when I really, I think I got this idea that I want to learn foreign languages and that I want to speak English just as my grandmother and I want to know what it is like to speak English, to think using this language. But uh, when I went to school hoping I would get English classes, um, I actually got French classes. I'm not gonna go into details, but the thing is they didn't allow me to actually go to the English classes. That's a weird Russian school thing. So when I was 12, those classes started and as a sign of a protest, I decided not to learn French. So I I went to all classes and I did all the homework, but well, basically I couldn't read the language, I couldn't speak the language, I didn't know anything about French uh, and that's how I kept going till one point when I changed my mind somehow it just naturally came to me. I remember one night my mom told me to just put a song, a French song, Et si tu n'existes pas, but, uh, because she liked the song and I listened to it with her together and at that moment it's just, I don't know, it just clicked. Basically after this song I started diving deeper into French, given that I really couldn't even read French. <laughs> I started from scratch on my own and I studied French on my own till I got into the linguistic, to Moscow State Linguistic University. So how it happened? You need to actually have some context about ed higher education in Russia to... we basically choose our major even before we go to a specific university. In Russia you choose specific university and you choose specific school and you apply there immediately. And to actually be admitted, you need to present them uh, the results of uh, high school exams and you need to choose those exams accordingly. For instance, if you choose, if you want to be a linguist in Russia, you need to choose a language exam at the end of high school uh, and maybe history exam or social sciences exam or something like it to pass them to get your results and go to the linguistic school that's the only way we do things so there is no way to go to a university and then choose your major in russia uh, and uh, well when i when my last year in high school started i had no idea what i wanted to do but i still picked french exam and i was thinking about linguistics just because the only thing I knew is that I wanted to speak multiple languages and at that point I didn't speak any English, only French and I wanted to learn English as well and I thought that, well, maybe linguistics, it is something 
closer to what I would actually be doing. So I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew I loved languages and wanted to speak more of them. And also given that gap year is not really a thing in Russia, I decided to go to Moscow State Linguistic University. Luckily, I got good enough results to get completely free education in that university. And now what it was like to study in Linguistic University, and I'll admit it was tough. <laughs> I studied there four years. Uh, my first language there was French, second English, and everything was taught in French. So most of our classes were in French and about French or about linguistics, linguistics through French. So uh, we had a lot of practical classes, like uh, classes where uh, we studied in smaller groups and we did a lot of uh, written or spoken exercises and that was a lot of fun. We had pronunciation class with a phonetics professor and also grammar class, French grammar class with a grammar professor and uh, mass media vocabulary, just general vocabulary classes and a lot of a lot of interesting stuff and each class was taught by a separate teacher. Linguistics is a science, and we had a lot of theoretical classes to study different branches of the science. We had theoretical grammar, uh, lexicology, phonetics, phonology, and so on. Also, we had just a general linguistics class and intercultural communication class, which was really interesting. We learned the differences between different cultures and how those differences are reflected uh, in the languages. But knowing a language <laughs> is not actually a profession, so we had more profession-oriented classes, uh, for instance, teaching methodology, tr translation, and even a Python class, which I suppose was some kind of beginner class for future computational linguists. And all those classes were required, and that's because in Russian university you cannot pick your classes, all of them are required, and the curriculum is kind of pre-built for you and for the whole uh, group of people who are studying with you. And my favorite classes were, I'd say more or less, all the practical classes. The main reason why I came there was to learn languages, so I really enjoyed all the classes uh, that were more practical. I enjoyed practicing writing, speaking, listening, reading with our teachers, uh, professors, and within our small group uh, of students. And also university is the time when I started teaching French and giving private lessons because that's what, that was uh, a good a way to earn some money as a student but also to practice French. Uh, as they say, you know, if you want to learn something, teach it. I graduated in 2019 and, well, honestly, I didn't intend to even use my bachelor's degree. Spoiler alert, I did use it when I was interviewing for a voice builder position with CRTTS team. But right after university, I was kind of in between jobs. Even before I graduated, my last year in there, I already started thinking about my future and my career. I knew I didn't want to be a teacher or translator, uh, even though I, oh, I was already giving private classes and I loved all my students, but I knew it wasn't my thing. At that point, I also didn't know that I, I could go computational linguist direction. So <laughs> not having, not knowing about that opportunity, uh, I was left with teaching or translation. I didn't want to do either of those. Uh, and that's how I started learning programming. Meanwhile, I was teaching French and uh, building online courses and launching online courses. And interestingly enough, <laughs> building online courses is actually something that was a great motivation for me to learn how to build websites and learn more about web development because I needed a website for my courses. I needed an online platform to host all my lessons. So that's was really great motivation to start learning how to build websites and all of my first websites for my personal uh, classes were built by myself uh, and uh, soon after I graduated I also it, it, it's worth mentioning I moved to the United States uh, and that was another motivation why I wanted to learn how to code it was a little bit hard to work as a teacher for Russian audience from the United States 
both time-wise and financially-wise. And I was leaning towards something that better fits, I think, uh, not, I don't like to say my personality, like it's something set in stone. Uh, it's just I, what I don't like about teaching is that it involves a lot of communication. And I wanted to do something with less communication. Uh, I don't want to say that I don't like to communicate with people. It's just talking to people, like having meetings and brainstorming together or pairing as a programmer is one thing for me, but teaching is another. For me, it requires, it feels like it requires more involvement on a different level. And that's what I didn't really enjoy as much. So many factors combined, I decided to learn how to code, which I did on my own. Uh, and at some point I started applying for coding jobs. And in the middle of all of it, I got an invitation to uh, interview for a voice building position. The description was nearly perfect. They wanted a Russian native speaker with a bachelor in linguistics or computational linguistics, someone uh, who had experience with phonetics. And I had a lot of experience transcribing texts uh, university and also uh, I just loved phonetics and I even started a channel about French phonetics uh, and also they needed someone with technical skills like Python programming, Python scripting, um, the knowledge of Git and Terminal and yeah it was nearly perfect except for one part. <laughs> I was looking for a front-end developer role and I was interested in consolidating my skills of JavaScript developer and React and CSS things. Uh, but I was curious about that position. Building voices for uh, Russian Siri sounded quite fun. Uh, so I accepted the invitation and I actually got the offer. I was a contractor uh, hired by a third uh, company, but I worked with Apple. Uh, I can't really share anything about it. I just can say general things. If you, well, if you're thinking about getting a major in linguistics, but you're not sure you want to be a teacher or a translator, look into computational linguistics. Uh, look into the roles like language engineer uh, or voice builder, uh, voice building engineer. Those uh, are things you can do with a major in computational linguistics. Uh, and I would definitely recommend learning something like Python, Git, uh, using terminal, uh, all that fun kind of stuff, and maybe a little bit of machine learning and AI. I was with Siri TTS team almost a year, a little bit less than a year, and that was quite a journey, learning how Siri works uh, and how to build Siri voices. Built a lot of Siri voices and made a lot of fixes to the voice, uh, and I think the current voices that are now in production are the ones that I've built and I'm super proud of this, I'm super happy I was able to help the team to improve Russian Siri a little bit. Uh, but anyways, I decided this summer I decided to move on to quit my job because I I came to conclusion that I still want to do software engineering more than anything. My job on Siri TTS team ended up being some kind of a split between computational linguistics and web development because along with Siri voices I had to work on internal web tools. That's why I'm saying that I on that role I realized I still wanted to do more development and engineering. I realized I was more passionate about the web development part and not voice building part. Maybe I'll change my mind in the future, who knows? But at this point, um, at that point, I wanted to be 100% developer and not only 50% of my time. And so I do not use my uh, <laughs> major in linguistics anymore. I expected it to be this way. Well, hopefully this video will answer some of your questions about majoring in linguistics. I know that my experience uh, won't be maybe as relatable <laughs> uh, to international audience because I studied in Moscow and the classes that we had uh, were required and all that kind of stuff. stuff. But I, I hope that the general vibe uh, and my story still can be helpful to you. I think that's it for today. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. If you want more content about languages, linguistics, programming, 
my golden retriever puppy <laughs> subscribe to this channel and i'll catch you in my next video bye bye au revoir